let's talk about neural network pipeline parallelism. When parallelizing a neural network, the main decision is where to cut. That is, how do we take our computations and spread them out onto our devices? The most basic way would be simply to put each of our hidden layers on different devices. So in this picture here, each of our layers is put, say, onto different GPUs. When doing this, we run into the problem of serial computation. When thinking about our neural network, we have to compute the first layer before the second, before the third, and before the fourth. This is true both on the forward pass and also on the backward pass, although the updates can all be done simultaneously. While this is nice, it leads to a problem which is known as the pipeline bubble. We have all this idle time where we're not actually utilizing our parallelism to do anything because we need to wait for the layers around us to do their computation. Because of this serialism, we don't actually get any benefits from this type of pipeline parallelism. There are many different solutions to this problem, and they can get quite complex. But the most basic idea is going to be to break up our batches into what are called micro batches. If we can do this, we can start out this serial dependency, passing things up in the chain, while still computing the next micro batch in this process. So in this example here, we have four different micro batches. Each of them are computed in this serial fashion, both for the forward pass and for the backwards pass. We still have this bubble, but you can see that we're getting many more steps where multiple of our GPUs are working simultaneously. So we didn't do anything to fix the serial problem, but we are getting much more usage of our system. This is from a paper known as GPipe. Since then, many other forms of doing this pipelining has come out, and all of them kind of reduce the bubble in ways that we're seeing similar to what I'm describing above. In a recent paper, which I discuss in many of these slides, DeepSeq v3, they use a method that overlaps in the pipeline both the forward pass for the next batch and the backward pass from a previous batch. It's hard to totally see in this diagram, but you can see you get a kind of arrowhead-like shape where uh, a forward pass is happening from the top to the bottom, while a backwards pass is happening from the bottom to the top. When you um, kind of run these two together, you get really good usage of all the GPUs and a very small bubble. Uh, for this particular example, there are various other challenges, like having double the memory on each device, but they argue that this is beneficial for reducing the amount of serial bottlenecks.